you know, I'm in Orlando. And I did the shooting. White supremacy movements are nothing new in this country. For student protesters, some uh, anarchists. Twitter has become gather. a front line in the propaganda war. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! For my brothers, come to Japan and feel the honor we are feeling. Feel the happiness that we are feeling. We're hearing today more and more in Serbia, but also the Western Balkans and in the European context, a lot more about the terms extremism, violent extremism and radicalization. Jedan od suštinskih ciljeva radikalizacije jeste održavanje nekog latentnog konflikta. To može nekad biti imati konotaciju političkog, a nekad može biti društveno, kulturološki pa i religijski. Radicalism as a basic concept is not in itself necessarily bad. The problem comes when violence is seen as an acceptable or even necessary uh, method to try to achieve one's goals. Ja vidim dve velike opasnosti kada reč o ekstremizmu na teritoriji Srbije. Prvi je taj religijski motivisan koji se pre svega danas vezuje za ideološku interpretaciju islama. Međutim, sa druge strane imamo i porast tog ekstremno desničarskog oblika koji se vezuje za različite veste kuliganskih grupa, za neonacizam, neofašizam i koji je posledica onoga što nam se dešavalo u 90-ih, ali ne samo kod nas, nego i u čitovom regionu. We start to see that the center seems to be moving to the right right now. This creates a whole set of risks for people, for groups who have been traditionally marginalized. Ukoliko pogledamo kontekst, recimo u Srbiji, vi imate situaciju da je ta krajnja desnica zapravo svedena na internet. Nije samo Srbija plodno tle, mi vidimo trend jačanja desnice u čitavom svetu. To je trend, to je moderno, to je must have, to je in. And in this sense, again, it's an issue of looking at the broader structural and environmental context in which these messages, these narratives are being propagated, either in the real world or online. Instead of trying to control the supply of information, it's more important to try to look at addressing the demand side of the equation. Radikalizacija kod mladih ljudi je pre svega povezana sa krizom identiteta. Ja mogu da razumem potrebu mladog čoveka da ima neku pripadnost, pa ode u navijačku grupu ili u neku političku organizaciju, negde gde je u timu i gde ima, gde nešto njega definiše. Radikalizacija se ne dešava preko noći. Ona je zapravo jedan proces koji podrazumeva pre svega promjenu sistema vrednosti. I to je proces koji nikada nije univerzalan. Neće se svako radikalizovati na isti način. Extremist groups are selling a narrative to their audience, to their target population. This is what we believe. This is why we believe it. This is what the other believes and this is why they're wrong. This is an issue of values and whether or not extremist values of any flavor are going to be more appealing to and are going to be more effective at filling a void that some people feel. Experts increasingly agree that there is no one profile or definition of an individual at risk. To je nedostatak ponude, nedostatak sadržaja, nedostatak mogućnosti da shvatimo i vidimo da i može drugačije. An issue is more not just how much formal education someone has, but do they have the critical thinking skills, the analytical skills, to really be able to see that the world is not black and white. I think when you look through the history of terrorism and political violence and politically motivated extremism, there's always adaptation to the new technology of the day. And we know, of course, that with movements that have very few supporters that are very rare and in some cases are illegal, it is hugely important that you have a place where you can connect to other people. And I think it's this connective role that the internet and social media is playing, the most unique element that we're seeing in the 21st century right now. What extremists do online isn't fundamentally different from what the rest of us do online. The internet doesn't single-handedly cause people to become extremists or terrorists. However, the internet has changed how people radicalize. Zavisno od situacije, zavisnosti od 
toga šta je poenta komunikacije, razni kanali su korišteni od strane ekstremista da bi se prenala neka poruka i napravila neki uticaj. Whenever a new technology comes around or a new opportunity to promote their cause, they are using that opportunity. Content removal doesn't necessarily cause extremists to go away. It causes them to go somewhere else. There is always a debate going on about what is the right strategy to try to prevent it from being used as an indoctrination method. And when policymakers talk about censorship, they shouldn't delude themselves into thinking that taking stuff online will make it disappear. It may have a disruptive effect, but it doesn't solve the problem. That's a discussion societies need to have. Do you, people want to have an open internet the way the internet was conceived? Or do they want to put a wall around it and really limit it? Rather than focus on censorship, let's spend more time thinking about how to engage and challenge people online. The new word for that is counter speech. Uh, we need to be better at explaining alternative narratives, at selling the vision of values and the way society and education and politics and community life is um, presented and structured. Stvoriti neke kontra narative koji će biti pozitivni, koji će ukazati na neki drugačiji sistem vrednosti i koji će osvestiti mlade ljude. Čovjek koji želi da, da se obrazuje, da širi shvatanja, vrlo lako može da nađe, bira, bira male ventile i medijske i, i kulturne i umetničke. Is there a strong civil society that can try to engage in dialogue? Do schools engage in helping to give young people critical thinking skills? Do government institutions have the strength and the trust and the resilience? Does the media have the trust of the people? And does the media have the objectivity and the fact-based investigative journalism techniques needed to serve the people? Ja mislim da je ključna stvar ono što je dugoročno karaktera. Sa jedne strane jeste socijalizacija, a drugo jeste rad na medijskoj pismenosti i digitalnoj, da se ljudi kroz neki formalni sistem suočavaju sa ovakim stvarima i to je nešto što može na duže staze donete rezultate. Očigledno moramo da se svako ponosom bavimo i svojom okolinom i bliskim ljudima i da utičemo na njih, ne sad da promenimo njihove stavove, nego samo da im ponudimo, da ih obavestimo da postoji izbor zatucani roditelji, indoktrinirani reality programima, indoktrinirani žutom štampom, indoktrinirani glupom muzikom i ubeđeni u ono što im serviraju oficijalni mediji, rađaju divnu decu, spremnu da izrastu divne ljude i od njih prave kretene i zombije. Jadna deca, jadna deca i sram te roditelje. Edukacija roditelja. Edukacija roditelja da od svoje dragocene divne dece ne prave zombije kakvi su oni pristali da postanu jer im je tako lakše. Kraj.